Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the city's Dale and Whitaker Complete Streets project. This is the community meeting number three. Number one, the first community meeting was conducted in February this year via Zoom as well. The second community meeting was conducted uh, in March, and that was an in-person meeting. We had a great turnout for those two meetings. Thank you all for that. For those of you who are here today, thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to be here to understand the project and hear to the facts of this project and provide us with your valuable input. So I'm hoping to, we are hoping to have a short, productive and engaging meeting. For those of you who are using the Zoom for the first time, so there's uh, multiple ways to interact with us. At any time, uh, please type in your questions and comments in the Q&A window, and we will answer them during the Q&A session. Also, you can raise your hand to speak during the Q&A session. Either way, we are going to make sure that we get to your questions in the order, <clears throat> and we'll make sure that we answer them to the best of our ability. Coming to the introductions portion, uh, myself, my name is uh, Deepthi Arabalu. Hello, everyone. I'm the principal engineer and also the project manager for this um, beautiful project. I'm going to turn it over to my uh, project partner for his introduction. Yeah, my name is Joe Hunt and I'm a senior management analyst here with the Public Works Department. And I'm excited to be a part of this project as well. And you have uh, Joe's and my email address here. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, most importantly, please um, try to um, reserve your comments um, and any questions just to the Dale and Dale Whitaker Complete Streets project. Anything outside of this project, any questions or any comments you have about in other areas, um, please uh, send me an email directly or contact our office through our phone number. So this uh, chat and this meeting is specifically uh, reserved only for the Dale and Whitaker Complete Streets projects. Thank you. So coming to the agenda this <clears throat> evening, um, so we're going to talk about um, what is a complete street and what it actually means to you. Then we'll go over the background on this project. And then we'll talk about the existing conditions and uh, project features and updates. This is the portion where we're going to spend most of our time today. And finally, we will seek public input about the complete streets needs. So what is a complete street and how does it matter to you? So a complete street is a street that's designed and operated to enable safe use and mobility for all users. Users include people of all ages and abilities, beginning children, school going children to senior citizens. So here's a picture and um, it's worth a thousand words. So this is a typical complete mm -hmm. street see design. Talking, right? And you can mm -hmm. see that the roadway is operating um, with pedestrians, bicyclists, automobiles, transit, and persons with dis disabilities to be using it simultaneously and safely. So that's the goal of a complete streets design. So the design of, of a complete streets may address a wide range of elements such as sidewalks, Bicycle lanes, blown out tires on it rains, bus pads, crossing opportunities like crosswalks that are protected and unprotected, median islands, accessible pedestrian signals. They are nothing but push buttons that communicate to users with audible messages, you know, telling you when to cross and when not to cross, etc. And then landscaping and streetscaping design. So this is what the goal of a complete streets is. So we often um, get asked what's happening, why Dale, why was Dale selected mm -hmm. versus other streets in the city. So to clarify questions like that, we would like to give a brief background on why Dale was selected. So back in 2017, the city council adopted a resolution approving the city's complete streets master plan. With extensive community input at that time, a complete streets pilot project along Dale Street from Auto Center Drive to Commonwealth Avenue was I identified as part of the plan. Them. So the design and the ATP grant applications were subsubsequently no completed. Sense. 
This is exactly what I read the thing. So before. this is the design um, what, that was completed yeah. on the first portion of Dale, which includes Dale from Order Center to Commonwealth. So what you can see in that design is on-street buffered bike lane. That shows parking. Like you see here, this is a buffered bike lane where you have a small buffer between through traffic and a bike lane. So this is this is the picture that shows an example of a buffered bike lane. And, and yes, we are having green bike lanes, not through the entire portion of the of, of Dale, but only at conflicting points. And landscape parkways, you can this see this is a good example parking. of a drought resistant landscape parkway here. And we're going to have raised median islands with decorative hardscaping and some landscaping. Mm -hmm. So this is this picture here, you can see, you can see a median with um, some landscaping and hardscaping and drought resistant plantation. On street parking, like here, ADA ramps and continental crosswalks. Hold on, I have to go back. So I know the screen is too small for me to share everything. So here's a picture of a continental crosswalk with ADA ramps. And finally, we'll be slurry sealing the street and adding new striping to fit this entire design. So I'm going to pass it over to Joe at this point. Joe, can you please take over? Yeah. Yeah, so we did complete that design um, from Auto Center to Commonwealth on Dale. Um, but at the time the city applied for the grant, uh, the city did not win any grant funding for the project, unfortunately. So we're taking another crack at it. We're looking at the project, seeing how we can improve it. And we are going to be reapplying for the 2023 ATP Cycle 6 grant funding. Um, and part of our design is to extend the scope. And so you can see on the image here, um, our original design is in yellow, the yellow kind of hash mark. And that's Dale Street from Commonwealth to Auto Center Drive. And we're going to go ahead and extend the portion of Dale north all the way to Malvern. Um, this is great because uh, the Metrolink station is up there. And then we're also going to do Whitaker from Stanton to the East City Limit. And so here's another photo of, of basically the same thing, but it's kind of been flipped sideways uh, just to make it a little easier to read. And um, again, you can see um, the extended scope of the project, the original being a blue hash mark and the green areas being the new areas we're adding. And um, you know, it's great that we, um, the city also won a large grant for Whitaker School Joint Use Park. So our design will be connecting to the park, which we expect will be getting a lot of use, have a lot of pedestrians going to that park. And it'll also, again, connect up to Metrolink up near Malvern Street or Malvern Avenue. Um, so again, um, you could have a lot of uh, commuters utilizing bikes or scooters or pedestrians trying to get to the Metrolink station so they can get to work or, or whatever their destination is. And a complete street would be a great avenue for them to reach that station, uh, whether whether they're leaving Buena Park or entering Buena Park. And, Melbourne, Melbourne. and then on Malvern, additionally, um, we are uh, doing a rehabilitation project on Malvern. It's in design right now. Um, so you'll be seeing that soon. And we are gonna be adding bike lanes to Malvern wherever we can. Um, so again, our complete street project will, will connect to those bike lanes on Malvern. So we've got a lot of improvements here that we're really excited about. And so I kind of uh, went over a lot of this on, on the previous slides, but again, we think connecting to Metrolink, um, adding uh, bike lanes, this area of Buena Park is designated as a disadvantaged community. Um, and, you know, uh, Malvern Avenue, um, again, the bike lanes that we propose adding there, which isn't necessarily in the scope of this project, but still benefit, are going to connect to Fullerton and La Mirada to the east and west. So, again, we're really hoping that these additions to the project will really increase our chances of getting grant funding. Um, so we think it's a much stronger project now. So, yeah, I'm moving on to the... Yeah, sorry. 
So I'm moving on to the existing conditions and the project features. This is the most important part of um, today's meeting where you're going to actually learn on what this project is going to offer to the community. So I'm not going to touch a lot on the first portion of Dale, which is from Auto Center to Commonwealth, because that design has been completed back in 2018, and it was completed based on the community meetings conducted at that time. Of course, it is a major part of this project, but I'm going to cover more on the new scope of work, which extends from uh, Commonwealth on Dale to, uh, to uh, Melbourne. So I'm dividing it into segments for better understanding. So the first segment is Dale between Commonwealth and Artesia. You can see a picture here. This is how it looks today. So there's two lanes in each direction with the painted median. So what the project is going to give us, here's the cross section of the new design that you're going to see on this portion of Dale between Commonwealth and Artesia. So right now you have two lanes and a painted median, no bike lanes, and fortunately there's no parking. So the new design is still going to have two lanes that are 11 foot width. Each lane is going to be 11 foot wide and we're still going to have the uh, painted median, but we are going to also have five foot bike lanes adjacent to the um, sidewalk here. So this is how the new design is going to look on Dale all the way from Commonwealth to Artesia. This is the typical section in that area. And you can see that here for this specifically for this corner, you can see that it's a barren um, parkway right now. As a part of this project, we are also adding drought resi resistant landscaping to make this area look pretty. So work on this project, as I said, will be including class two bike lanes, green bike lanes at this intersection. So during our last community meeting, there were some residents that expressed concern um, about you know, adding green bike lanes um, approaching the intersection at Commonwealth. So we took that into consideration and we modified our design to add green bike lanes at the intersection. And we're going to have landscape medians and parkways wherever possible, That's slurry ceiling, of course. And then we're going to add benches and trash cans for bus stops. So this is the next portion of Dale between Artesia and Melbourne. So this is how the, as most of you are aware, this is how the roadway looks, two lanes in each direction and it has a raised median. So the cross section here is pretty constrained, very, very um, tight uh, um, roadway cross section. So what we are doing here is um, we are actually protecting all the lanes as is because the ADT or the average daily traffic that this portion of Dale holds is pretty high. It's around, I believe it's around 18,000 if I'm not wrong. So therefore, at all times, we need to protect, we have two lanes in each direction to maintain the desired level of service for vehicle drivers. Therefore, um, what we are doing is we are um, actually cutting down the lane, lane two to 10 foot wide lane. And we are still protecting and having 11 foot lane. Number one lane is going to be 11 foot. Number two lane, which is this lane is going to be 10 feet wide. And then we are going to have a five foot bike lane. This is a win-win situation because we are, you know, we are not destroying the median. We are keeping it as is, um, but we are still squeezing in bike lanes with um, the cross section that I just mentioned. So uh, having a number two by a lane as a 10 foot lane is also a great traffic calming uh, measure. It's been an established um, um, traffic calming measure. So um, it's a win-win situation. I'm glad that we could actually um, get bike lanes in this section of um, Dale. So you guys are going to like this improvement. This is um, Dale at the Metrolink station. So in addition to adding bike lanes and everything that I mentioned in the past slides, uh, we are also doing some improvements to this area. You can see that there's this landscaping that kind of blocks the pathway, pedestrian pathway into the Metrolink station. So this project, as a part of this project, we are going to kind of you know, remove this existing landscaping and we're going to replace it with sidewalk to provide a seamless pedestrian access from Dale all the way from Dale into the Metrolink station. So moving on, um, this is uh, Dale between Metrolink and Melbourne. Um, this is how the roadway right now looks. And this is what you're going to see when this project is implemented. So we are going to have 11 foot lanes, which is great. 
um, we're going to have 11 foot lanes and then we're going to have a five, five foot bike lane adjacent to the sidewalk. We're still going to protect the left turn lane at Dale and still have a right turn lane. And the bike lane is going to go left of the right turn lane to avoid the right hook. And um, there was some uh, residents that actually expressed concern about the right turn hook. So our design is actually addressing that problem. So in this portion, we're going to have class two bike lanes, new benches and trash cans for bus stops, and then slurry sealing the street. Now um, that marks the end of um, Dale Street. Um, so I hope you guys have a good idea of what's happening on Dale. So I'm going on to Whitaker. We are also, you know, that Whitaker is also in the complete streets design and the portion of Whitaker that we are designing for complete streets extends all the way from Stanton to, um, to east of, um, east of uh, Dale um, into the Fullerton portion. So um, currently this is how Whitaker looks. It's two lanes in each direction and it has um, very heavy parking demand because there's a lot of driveways, um, uh, very um, heavy residential density. But the good thing is that the volume on this portion of Whitaker is pretty low. It's around 8,000 vehicles, um, um, average eight, um, ADT is around 8,000. So it's kind of over designed for four lanes. So we took advantage of that and we're actually doing something called a road diet, which is we remove one lane, which is because it's an over design. So we're removing one lane in each direction and we are utilizing that space to um, install a class two bike lane and protect parking. So you're still going to have parking on Whitaker, but you're going to get a nice wide bike lanes on this portion of Whitaker. So here's the cross section. If you look at this cross section on the top or right hand side top is Whitaker west of Indiana. And um, you, we are actually providing nine foot parking lanes. The optimum for parking lane is around seven and a half to eight. So we are going above that. We are we're providing a nice spacious nine foot parking lane. Adjacent to that, we are providing six foot bike lanes, which is great again, the minimum required is five. So we are one foot above that. And we are still going to have 11 foot um, travel lane in each direction. And the great thing for this design is that we are having a 10 foot two way left turn lane for making left turns on either side. So that's the design that we are implementing uh, west of Dale and east of Dale, um, sorry, um, west of Indiana. And east of Indiana, it's pretty much the same, but it's even better because now we are having seven foot bike lanes here, which is very, very good for bikers. And um, as I just mentioned, we're going to have a road diet, a class two bike lanes, on-street <clears> parking, <throat> new benches and trash cans for bus stops, landscaping and irrigation improvements in the parkways wherever we can, and of course, slurry sealing the roadway. And this is um, the intersection of Whitaker and Indiana, which is an always stop. So right now, this is how it looks. Now our new design that's going to include everything with respect to bike lanes, it's going to have something called bulb out. So you can see these extensions, they're called curb extensions or bulb outs. And um, they create a safer condition for pedestrians by shortening the crossing distance. You can see, you know, it's the crossing distance is now shortened by this much. However much I extend, it's, it's going to have a shorter crossing distance it's going to improve visibility and encourage drivers to slow down. So this is a great uh, feature that we are adding to our complete streets design. So this particular slide speaks about the minor changes um, in the existing on-street parking zones along Whitaker. So in this uh, designing this project um, on Dale and Whitaker, we've tried our best to retain the parking spots as is so that the, um, the residents of the area will have very little impact because of the bike lanes being in place. However, there's very few spots that we had to uh, inevitably remove the uh, on-street parking. And so I'm going to go over one by one um, so that you will get a good idea on where the changes uh, would be. Um, once this project is implemented. So if you look at the top picture here on this slide, um, there's a red zone there or the red ellipse there um, shows that you're going to lose two green parking spaces. 
So currently in this area, which is the northeast corner of Stanton and Whittaker, there is a, a commercial uh, complex there. And in front of it, currently you have like two, two green parking spaces, which are limited time parking spaces only. And you might lose those two spaces once this design goes into implementation. You can see that the bike lane is on the left of the right turn lane. That's the proposed design, which is very, very good um, design and very safe for bikers as well as um, you know, motorists. So with this design in place, you might expect to see um, that you're going to lose uh, two of those um, parking spaces. Similarly, if you come to the bottom right picture, um, so west of Dale on the south of Whitaker, um, you can see the red ellipse pointing that you might lose seven parking spaces. So this is right in front of the apartment complex. And um, with that design in place, um, you might lose um, around, I would say around like 200 feet of parking on street parking in front of the apartment complex. However, um, this should not impact the neighborhood as much. And that's because Whitaker, on Whitaker, on the other side, which is the north side of Whitaker, there's plenty of parking available and um, losing these 6.5 or seven spaces should not um, impact the residents much when compared to the positives they're getting out of this project. So similarly, east of um, Dale on the north side, uh, currently you have a spot for one parking space. Again, that's also in front of a commercial complex. So with this design in place, um, you, you're um, probably going to see that you lose that one parking space. So out of this entire project, um, these are the small changes that you're going to see. We're going to get a great project for um, at the expense of losing just few of these parking spots. But I do want to make it clear and communicate with the residents that this is what um, you, you would probably see you know, with respect to on-street parking if this project is implemented. So um, some important project updates that I would like to provide. Um, this, is, um, this is what <clears throat> transpired from our last community meetings. Um, so during our last community meetings, there were some residents that were that were requesting for additional crosswalk. Um, as Joe mentioned, uh, we have this prospective um, Whitaker Park that's right now in design and hopefully will go into construction sometime beginning of next year, I believe. Um, so we're going to get a brand new park here. So somebody from our last community meeting, a resident as well of Buena Park requested um, to provide access into this uh, Whitaker Park through a new crosswalk to uh, facilitate all the Fullerton residents. This is the east side of Dale is the city of Fullerton to actually go to the park by you know, providing a crosswalk. So we took it back to our office and evaluated the possibility of having a crosswalk in the vicinity of the park. And great that we found this location at Ash Avenue with, at this intersection. We're going to have a new crosswalk. We're going to have new ADA ramps and the crosswalk is going to be protected with rapid rectangular flashing beacons, which is, which is with a push button alert. Um, it's going to start flashing rapidly around 60 times a minute um, to alert drivers of a, of a pedestrian that's crossing. In addition to this, we are also going to have EL markings and you know, we're going to make the crosswalk as safe as we can. And similarly, there was another resident that requested for a bus stop at a high, you know, uh, this, this location here, um, the, the person or the resident mentioned that um, there was a lot of senior citizens and children that were um, using the bus stop here. So we considered that and now we are a design, we modified our design to add a nice bus stop here at this location on the Northwest corner of Dale and Whitaker. So with this, I'm going to hand it over to Joe back again. And so we um, conducted a survey and the survey was on the website and we advertised it on social media and we got um, a pretty good response. And, and so I'm gonna go through some of the answers uh, to the survey. And you know, the first question was how many days per week do you walk on Dale Street or Whitaker Street? And, you know, the answers were predominantly either I never walk on the street or I do it less than three times per week. Um, you know, we do have some responses that say they work a little bit more often than that. But we're hoping when we make the improvements um, that we get significantly more people walking on the street. 
you know, and that um, it, it's actually a more feasible option for them. Uh, so we can go on to the next one. Yes. The next question was how many days per week do you bike on Dale Street or Whitaker Street? And again, it's very much the same thing. Either I never bike on the streets or less than three times a week. So again, we're hoping to increase those numbers and hopefully it's a safer, more viable option and people feel more comfortable after this project. Uh, next, we have how often do you encounter aggressive drivers as a bicyclist or pedestrian on Dale Street? And, you know, we saw that the people taking this survey, um, most of them don't uh, walk or bike. Uh, and yet we've still got quite a few um, comments saying that they usually or sometimes are the two biggest answers see aggressive drivers. So, again, we're hoping with the road calming that we're doing on Whitaker and with the enhanced bike lanes on Dale, um, that people feel a bit more comfortable utilizing the road in this manner. And maybe some of the people who never rarely encounter aggressive drivers as a bicyclist or pedestrian, maybe it's because they never are a bike, bicyclist or pedestrian. Uh, next, we had, um, from a traffic perspective, I feel safe when I'm walking or biking on Dale Street and Whitaker Street. So it seems like most people were pretty neutral on this, which is good. Um, you know, we don't want people to feel unsafe on our streets. Uh, with that said, there were a little bit more people leaning towards maybe they do feel a little bit unsafe um, doing those activities as compared to, you know, people who feel like things are, are just great the way they are right now. So there's some improvements we can make. And we got what changes might improve your feeling of safety for walking or bicycling on Dale Street. Um, and the number one answer was striping for bike lanes, uh, which we're doing and uh, adding or changing signage was next, you know, shortly followed. Um, so, you know, we'll be doing that as well with bike lane signs and things like that. And with flashing markers for crosswalks. Um, and next is adding crosswalks, which we're doing uh, to get to the park. And we're also modifying the crosswalks to make them shorter and safer. Um, shared bicycle and vehicle lanes was next. Now um, we're gonna have dedicated bicycle lanes so we're actually not going to have shared bicycle lanes. It's going to be better than that. And adding bus shelters um, was last. And we are adding bus shelters. And we did get some good community feedback in our in-person meeting um, that, that that was definitely something some people were looking for. So we're excited about that. Um, we also have what other physical changes could be made to improve bicycling or walking on Dale Street. And um, the number one answer uh, by slim margin was wider sidewalks. Um, you know, that's really the only thing on here that's not part of this project. You know, we are constrained by the existing size of the right of way. And we thought it would be better to focus on having bicycle lanes and um, less on just widening the sidewalk. Um, but, but we will have bulb outs, which is kind of like a widened sidewalk near the intersection. Um, we're going to have um, well, we're not having roundabouts in this project. Um, certainly something to keep in mind um, in future projects. Um, additional landscaping, we are going to go ahead and include additional landscaping in, in several spots throughout the project. Uh, shorter crosswalks, we're doing that. And improved pedestrian access ramps. So certainly anytime we um, make substantial modifications to um, a street, we do enhance ADA accessibility, and that includes better access ramps for pedestrians. Uh, we also have when the city has more outreach meetings for this project. You know, we have had three, but we will probably have at least one more, if not more than that. Uh, do you prefer in person or online? And it was about two to one in favor of online, and we're doing our meeting online now. Um, and we've done two online meetings, one in person. And then we have, when we have more outreach meetings for this project, what's the best time? And it seems like the time we're doing right now, which is after 6 p.m., seems to be the best. Um, and the, the number two answer was on a Saturday. So we are looking to see if it's feasible to do one on Saturday. And if so, you know, would it make sense to do it in person or would it make sense to be online? Um, we'll, we'll certainly be thinking about that. 
Thank you, Joe. Um, so yeah, coming to the, the schedule, here's a very self-explanatory kind of easy to understand schedule that I have here. So in winter of 2022, as I mentioned, we conducted community meetings one and two on this project. Uh, between now and then, we actually went for city council review, consideration and approval. And then we started um, information gathering and we did a community survey and the survey was actually released in three different languages, English, Spanish, and Korean. And um, thank you all for taking it. We had good number of participants, more than what we expected. So that was great. So we took the um, information in the survey and the community meetings and we developed our draft plans. And that is what we are sharing with you today. So today we are um, yeah, in spring and uh, we are at community meeting number three. We are shooting for number four, but I'm not sure. Um, I, I'm not sure if we are actually going to do number four because we are almost at the time of uh, finalizing our plans. Um, so we might or we might not, but yeah, we will let you know if we are doing a, a community meeting number four. And our next immediate step and the most important step is we will be submitting our grant application. The, the total cost of this project is a, le a little less than 3 million. Um, so we are um, applying for an ATP grant, which is called an active transportation grant. And our grant will be submitted um, in the end of June, I believe. And maybe uh, at the end of fall, we will be receiving the results of the grant. And from there on, everything will depend upon the result of what our next steps would be. If we receive the grant, great. We will um, you know, complete the 100% design on uh, the first portion of Dale is already ready to go. The second portion of Dale, which I shared right now is right now it's conceptual and um, we will finalize that. We'll go for, you know, go for construction. So um, yeah, but if we don't receive the grant, then we will go for plan B. Um, um, I think it's too early to decide, um, at, I mean, too early to talk about it right now, but we do have a plan B in place. So uh, everything crossing fingers, everything depends upon the results of our grant application. So that's where I ended our schedule part. Um, and um, you know, depending on the result, we will um, release the schedule for the next six months. So yeah. So yeah, um, that's uh, pretty much all the technical stuff that uh, we could present. Um, uh, here's this other ways to stay connected and involved. Um, as Joe mentioned, and I also mentioned, we did have a survey released in three different languages. It's on our website. Um, if you actually click through that link, um, you will be taken to the complete streets uh, 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 survey um, that we are actually requesting everyone to take. Uh, it's in three different languages. If you have not participated in the survey and um, you know, if anybody you knows or who you know that would be interested in this project has not taken the survey, please kind of request them to do so. That's very helpful for us um, for the well-being of this project. So um, we're going to close the survey in the next two to three weeks. Um, this is April 14th. So maybe around uh, the mid of May, we are going to close the survey. And I have our, our, our office phone number there and that's my email address. So any questions you have, anything outside of what I spoke today, any other problems in the cities that you're encountering? Yes, I'm, we are here to help. Please reach out to me through that email address. So yeah. I'm gonna jump in, Deepi. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, regarding the survey, I'm not sure if anyone can actually click that through, through Zoom. Um, if you can't, you know, we do have a shortened link. Um, it's if you want to write it down, um, it's tiny, T I N Y dot C C slash survey B P. You can type there, right? Yeah. And I can type that in the chat, actually. Yeah, I'll go ahead and type it in the chat so you can see it. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, with that, um, I'm going to open the public input uh, session. This is the time you can either type your question here. I'm going to actually go back and see if I, uh, you know, if I can answer all the questions that I have not addressed yet. And you can also raise your hand and we'll unmute you and you can, um, you know, actually talk whichever is easy for you. So um, while, you while you type or ready to answer a question, I'm going to go back and see the questions. I'm going to read them out. Mm, 
Okay, this is about the mic. Rebecca says, hi, is the Spanish translation available for this PowerPoint? Unfortunately, Rebecca, we don't have a Spanish translation at this time, um, but I'm going to actually see how we can uh, translate this PowerPoint into Spanish. Um, we do have the resources. So I just have to um, know who exactly can do that. And if so, um, I will do that. And um, if you leave your email address with me here in the chat, uh, hopefully this chat is recorded. Uh, I can actually um, work with you on the Spanish translation. So, yeah. Uh, Bruce, um, Mr. Bruce Johnson, he's asking, how do bike lanes go under the bridge on Dale? It's exactly the same cross section that we are following. Let me go back and show you the cross section. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, um, Bruce, if you can see the cross section here on the right side, this is exactly how it's going to be under the bridge. It's nothing different. It's going to be 11 foot by 11 foot travel lane followed by adjacent to it is going to be a 10 foot um, uh, travel lane, and adjacent to that is going to be a five foot bike lane. This is in addition to the the sidewalk um, that's present um, on both sides of Dale. So the landscaping on the right and on the left are going to remain as they are. Okay. Um, can you repeat what you said? Sorry. The landscaping on the right and the left are going to remain the same as they are now. Yes, exactly. We are not going okay. to touch that area. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Thank you. Um, okay. I'm moving on. How do bike lanes go on the bridge? I've answered that. Can you share the information in Spanish? Norma, um, I'll try to do my answered. best. I already answered that. Um, link to the survey. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? Um, we are ready to answer. I haven't quite figured out that link yet. Do I copy it onto uh, to the uh, website? Oh, do you see it? Um, yeah, do you see it on the chat there? Yeah. I do. I cannot. Uh, I cannot click on it. It's, it doesn't do anything. There's no hyperlink associated with it. Uh, uh, Bruce, I can actually send you. I actually did send the, the survey to all the um, traffic commissioners, but I can resend it to you. But um, it's very simple. All you need to do is just go to the buenapark.com website and then go to the engineering departments, engineering services, and complete streets. It's right there. It'll show up as a pop-up as soon as you click on that website. Let me, let me try going there so you can see. Hold on. Thank you. That's what I was just trying to do is to experiment. Yeah, I, will, yes, I, will. I, I realize okay. I have access to it myself. but Here you go. So else. I'm going to the buenapark.com city departments. Here you go. Can all of you see my screen? There you go. It directly, it's just a city website and then um, under city departments, public works, engineering services and complete streets. Here is the blue, here's the survey on the right mm -hmm. side. You can say, take the, you can see this, take the Dale pop-up, take the Dale complete street survey. So you click on it, you'll see three different languages. I'm sorry, all I saw was the presentation. I didn't see the... On the right hand side, oh, I think it's not sharing properly. It's not sharing. Okay. Or if you go to the um, if you go to the chat and you can see the link, uh, even if you can't click on it, you can type that into uh, any web browser. It's tiny dot cc slash um, survey bp. There you go. I also posted it. In the or chat. there's the longer one there. Yeah, I, I posted the longer you one. I have some trouble typing that one in now. Maybe you can just click on it. Okay, I'm moving on. Um, if you miss this, Bruce, I'm going to resend every everything. I'm going to resend the link to your email address. Okay. Do you have it there? Yeah, I do. Okay. Okay, uh, next, Rebecca, I know there was a few participants and tonight that are Spanish speakers. I'm happy to share the Spanish PowerPoint with them after. Okay, yeah, we will try to do our best. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I've never usually uh, converted a PowerPoint to Spanish translation. So I'm going to work with someone in the city that has that expertise and um, will try my best to provide you with the needed. Oh, thank you, Emily. That's a very kind comment. Okay, Brenda says, have you addressed the traffic on Whitaker at Dale at school time? Oh, have you addressed the traffic on Whitaker at Dale at school time? Brenda, um, uh, this is there actually a problem? Uh, I don't know that there was a problem. I was not, nobody reached out to me about a circulation issue that you're talking about, but we'll definitely look into that. But as of now, my answer is no, we have not because we did not know that there was a problem there. Mike has his hand raised. Hmm? Mike Wilkinson has his hand oh, raised. Oh, okay. So I have to unmute Mike. Ask to unmute. Okay, Mike, you are unmuted now. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your work on this. I really appreciate the uh, dedication of the city staff. Thank you very much for that. I wonder if we can get a copy of the presentation. There's a lot to digest and you presented it well, but I'd still like to look it over some more. I wonder if I can get a, a PDF copy or, or uh, even a PowerPoint copy, please. Definitely, definitely. That's an easy, simple request. <laughs> so yeah, uh, on Monday, I'm going to send it over to you, Mike. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then Jacqueline has her hand raised as well. Um, Jacqueline, oh, mm -hmm. hold on. Where is Jacqueline? Hold on. Ask to unmute. Just ask her. Yeah. Um, Jacqueline, you can go ahead and speak now. Okay. Thank you. I'm uh, supporting the request, the Rebecca's requesting. I very, very appreciate that you can uh, make this presentation for uh, Latin Hispanic families because in those area, uh, there we live a lot of uh, Latin families there. Um, yes, we can make our inputs in about concerns like hours of the schools, uh, that, uh, those streets, because those streets are, all the, that um, streets are the um, connection with five schools in the area. We mm -hmm. are school, Head Start School, Bonaparte High School, Emery School, and Berry School. So yes, I of course I I formally request uh, this to to make this information talking with in Spanish too, because it's important to to get all the thoughts about a uh, those situation and in, in the in the streets uh, with the biking lines, how is going to be the traffic on um, that in that in that say uh, hours. So it will be safe for the bikers or not? What is what could, what is could happen? So yes, I would like to maybe the the question for to talk in this course with in Spanish too. Thank you. Sure, um, sure, Jacqueline. Uh, we will try to convert the PowerPoint to Spanish and share it with you. Um, I actually contacted um, your principal, the principal of Whitaker Elementary, and I requested her to share about today's um, uh, community meeting with their PTA. I don't know, I didn't hear back. So I'm hoping that this message actually reached uh, the PTA community of the Whittaker Elementary School. Yeah, but if you, if you um, offer this presentation in Spanish, yeah, it is very, very uh, uh, helpful because the family, Latin Hispanic that we live in this part of Buena Park, uh, between, you know, 4th Street, all those streets, 7th Street, 8th Street, 9th Street, you know, we use uh, that that streets for to, for to get out of, the, out of the schools. So for me, it's important to get what is, what is thinking of family, a family Latin, if we have a bike line there. For me, it's, it's, I understand your connection, the, the worker uh, families with the metro, I understand that. But it's important to get what is, what I thinking about the, with the traffic when the, we have to access to, the, to those schools because we use the, those streets for to get to five schools. 
to, to connect with five schools. So for me, it's important to get the thoughts about the, these families, Spanish families mainly, because we live in this area. Um, yes, we can continue with this input process. Sure. Um, yeah, I definitely will, will consider the Spanish translation, Jacqueline. Thank you. And uh, may I please ask you to leave your email address in the chat, please? So that, you know, if I get this translation on time, I will also send it to you along with the others that have requested it. So please go ahead and leave me your email address in the chat box. Yes, thank you. Okay, and I'm moving on. Brenda has a question. She's saying, yes, traffic coming through our neighborhood to avoid crossing guard. Um, uh, Brenda, I'm. Uh, can you please clarify? Um, are you talking about the crossing guard on Whitaker at Indiana, or I, I I can't remember the name of the street by the school. Dale at Whitaker. Okay, is there a crossing guard right now there or no? Yes or no? Okay. So. Okay, so, um, okay, thank you, Jacqueline. So Brenda, so the thing is you're saying that there is a crossing guard, which is a very safe thing to have uh, at the intersection of Dale and Whitaker, but people to avoid the crossing guard and the delay they're going through your neighborhood, is that what you're saying? People on Whitaker don't want, um, uh, so people on Whitaker, they don't want to go through the, or they don't want to wait. Yeah, I, I understand. Okay. And uh, which street are you living? Which street are you referring to? Which street are they, uh, are they cutting through? Handle. Okay, handle drive. Um, okay, I and we are word A. Okay. Okay, so here's here's my understanding about your concern. So there is a crossing guard at the intersection of Dale and Whitaker currently, which is a safe thing for the kids, of course. Um, but then people want to bypass the crossing guard because they don't want to wait because of the delay cost due to um, because of the crossing guard, and then they are. Uh, cutting through uh, your neighborhood streets. One of them is Via Wordy. Okay. Okay. They're going. Thank you, Joe. So I'm just looking at the at the Google Maps to understand what's happening. Okay. So Dale and Whitaker. So they go to Via Wordy and then go through Dale and. Okay. I see. Okay. Yeah, it's it's very, very difficult to um, address a cut through traffic issue. It's not that easy because, you know, there's no way you can restrict turns into the um, neighborhood streets because that's what they're meant for. They're, you know, they're collector streets that are meant to collect traffic from arterial streets and pass it on to other arterial streets. So um, really, there's, it, this is a difficult issue to address. Um, the I I don't know if the crossing guard currently is um, operating efficiently. If the crossing guard is operating efficiently, it should not cause a lot of delay during the peak hours. It should not actually um, cause so much delay that drivers are not, you know, are, are actually bypassing that intersection. So I'm going to look at it. Um, our, our team. Uh, Oh, uh, that's at Indiana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, there's two things. Well, number one is we will look at the intersection during peak hour, and we will um, we will see what exactly is happening um, to see if we can address the issue. But the other great news is that, um, as I mentioned, I'm going back to the slide for you to look at it. Um, this is exactly the intersection that we are trying to make safer than what it is today. Um, so if you look at the street, Whitaker at Indiana, 
uh, which is exactly west of the Via Verde Street. We are making this um, intersection. We are we are actually building building bulb outs and making it safer for uh, pedestrians. And faster. And it's going to be faster. So the crossing now is going to be faster than what it was in the past. If you were taking it, they were taking like six minutes to cross. Now they'll probably take only four minutes. So that will make a, a, a difference in the big picture. Okay. She still has her hand raised. I'm not sure if she went away. Oh, who has a hand raised? Brenda. Brenda, okay. I'm going to unmute. Why is it not letting me unmute? You can't unmute her. She has to. Um, Brenda, can you unmute yourself? Does she want to speak now? There you go. Great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Our big concern is currently we have the four lanes of traffic on Whitaker. On Whitaker. Yes. And we are ex experiencing the traffic coming through our down our street to avoid the crossing guard and that they've got two lanes of traffic each way and they're doing it now. So what happens that they only got one lane of traffic each way? Yeah, but um, the, you're probably talking about the issue during only the peak hours, right? During the morning and afternoon uh, peaks. Well, some days we swear that our street has become a, a raceway. I we see. don't understand what's going on, but we have actually clocked people at 50, 60 miles an hour coming through the residential area here. On, on Via Verde? Okay, we will, we will do a detailed um, um, investigation on Via Verde and, and see what the speeds are, of, what are the prevailing speeds of people traveling on Via Verde, and we will try to, if, if we see that there is a problem on paper, then yes, we will address the issue, the speeding issue. But I coming back to your question about, you know, that's a great question that you have asked me. You're saying that right now with two lanes of traffic, people are actually getting impatient and, uh, you know, turning onto your street. So if you're making it one lane in each direction, what's going to happen is your question. You know, it could go two ways, Brenda. People might actually get sick of waiting more and they might not even take COVID -ticker. It'll, the problem will probably shift to some other um, street. That's one way people avoid things, you know, like something like this, you know, they, they, they don't want more delay. So obviously they're not even going to take Whitaker, which is a good thing. Now, but of course we are shifting the problem to some other street, but which is completely unavoidable. The second thing is on paper, um, the volumes on the street are really very low for what it's supposed to be holding. So that's why we recognize this as a good candidate for a road diet. Okay, at what point in time was the survey made for the traffic? It's, it's an ADT, which, is, which counts the uh, 24 hour traffic. It hmm. counts the total traffic um, along uh, all the 24 hours and it gives us a number. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we did, we did that study and it came to a lot lesser than what the street can actually hold. I'm not saying that, you know, what you're saying is not happening because you're probably referring to it more during peak hours and during school hours when, when you know, when the crossing guard is in place. Correct. Yeah, I, I do see your um, issue and we will definitely look into that. But okay, again, okay. it can go, yeah, it can go both ways, Brenda. You know, people uh, with this kind of a design that's what usually happens, you know, some impatient drivers, they are like, okay, there's one lane and there's a crossing guard there. You know, I don't want to use this street anymore. I'm going to use a parallel street, like how they're finding your street, they'll find some other street. But um, again, you know, um, the good thing is, you know, we're trying to do our best to accommodate active transportation in the city of Buena Park, you know, we can't get everything. So we are trying to balance everything we have uh, based on the constrained cross sections that we have in the city. So, you know, um, uh, on Indiana, like I mentioned, we are cutting down the crossing distance, which means the time the drivers will need to wait will be reduced as well, because the crossing distance is now going to be reduced. So the time needed to cross from one point to the other point will be a lot lesser than what it is today, which means that it will directly reflect on the auto, automobile delay, which will be less. So that's, that's uh, you know, it's a trade-off. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. 
Else is there anybody else with um, anybody else? Otherwise, we can. Um, I'll probably wait for another two minutes, and uh, we can end the uh, the meeting unless somebody else has um, concerns. Yeah, in the meanwhile, I uh, thank you all for attending the meeting. I'm very happy that, you know, we have um, good um, uh, turnout today. And um, Bruce, thank you for the kind words. Um, thank you very much. Yes, we put in a lot of effort. Uh, Joe and me had put in a lot of effort into this. And um, we are trying our best to convey the information to um, you and seek your input. This is going to be a great project. It's the first of its kind in the city of Buena Park where we are actually doing a, a road diet, cutting down the lanes and using it for bike lanes and yet protecting parking. Um, so yeah, we are shifting towards an active transportation kind of a city. And um, we ask for full cooperation from uh, the community of Buena Park. Um, five years from now or 10 years from now, you're going to see a much active um, city <laughs> with respect to active transportation. You're going to see more bikers, more people walking, jogging, things like that. We have a lot of projects lined up that are actually going to improve the active transportation in the city of Buena Park. Thank you, thank you, Mike. Um, and thank you for your participation, continued participation. Okay, looks like uh, there's no other uh, questions. Um, if so, it's seven o'clock, um, it's probably five minutes to seven. So we had a good one hour meeting. Um, so thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to reach out to everybody uh, with the Spanish translation as soon as I get that done. Um, that pretty much it. And um, anybody else, I, I have my email address for you. Um, I'm going to type it here once again. Right now, Jacqueline's email. Oh yeah, uh, Jacqueline had typed in there. Hurry Last now. time it didn't save, so you wanna. <laughs> Mm, is there a way we can make sure that it saves? No or no? I don't know. I just know last time. <coughs> I wrote everyone's name down at a time. Um, can I have Brenda's email too? Brenda, can I have your email just in case, you know, this doesn't save? And Brenda, I see, has her hand up. Oh, okay. I think that's been up, yeah. Uh, Brenda, you have to unmute. I'm, I'm trying to unmute you. Okay. Yes, you can speak now, Brenda. Uh, no, I, I, it was up from the last time. Oh, okay. Well, thanks everybody for attending. We'll just go ahead and um, get those emails and that'll be it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Deepthi, can you hear me? Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Hi, um, I'm Rebecca. I'm with the healthcare agency. And so we work a lot. I just want to offer um, if you guys need a letter of support for this. I know we've done that for Swathi in the past. Uh -huh. um, so the healthcare agency is more than willing to kind of help write a letter. And also, if you need more public engagement, like a walk audit, I, I believe St. Jude did a walk audit back in 2016 um, with Whitaker parents, but we are super involved with Whitaker. And so if you want that or think it would help your grant application, um, we're more than happy to come out and, and engage parents from Whitaker to do kind of a review or a, a walk audit around um, that area as well. 
That's awesome. Thank you so much for the very kind offer, Rebecca. Can may I please ask you to leave your email address in the chat as well? Yes, I think I did, but I will put it in there again. And thank you guys. This was great information. And um, even if you're not able to translate into Spanish, if you could send me the English one, we have people uh, from the healthcare agency who can help translate as well. Thank you, thank you. I will definitely do it. One request I have from all of you, I mean, whoever is left, there's not a lot of people um, that are left is, if you can, you know, since I left you an email at my email address, if you can shoot me an email anytime next week, with you know, what your request was in case the chat is not saved, you know, I try to make a lot of notes, but it's kind of hard to present and make notes. So I tried my best, but I don't want to miss anything. So if you guys can send an email, you know, in that way, I'm not going to miss any communication. Great, will do. Thank you so much, you guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Okay, um, with that, we're going to end this meeting. Bye-bye. Good night. Have a good weekend, all of you.